Time. Why? Where does it start? Where does it end? Before the Big Bang. Time. Was there, or, will there be an end, of everything, from all of us, independent of location dot dot, in a straight line? Is it something that flows? According to names like classical physicists Galileo, yes, time is absolute, immutable, constant, it flows independently of everything, Newton comes to mind, especially when absolute time is mentioned. But for one person, this was not the case. Yes, Albert Einstein was different from all classical views at the time, was not immutable. According to all scientists such as Newton, Galileo, Barrow, time did not change. It was absolute. The accepted concept of time was the same for everyone. It was something that could be measured but not perceived, moving at a constant speed at every point of the universe. Newton in particular believed that time and space were completely separate elements of objective reality, and he believed that if nothing remained in the universe, even if it perished, it would continue to exist on its own. So how did you come to this conclusion that time is not immutable? In fact, everything was falling into place. Newton's laws and equations explained everything. But there was a problem. Mercury? The whole problem was on the planet Mercury. Mercury somehow did not fit these calculations. There was always a deviation in its orbit. While some scientists were trying to explain this, they thought that there was another planet called Vulcan that we couldn't see. However, this deviation in the orbit of the planet Mercury could be explained by the gravitational effect of another planet. But there was no such planet. Now here, I want you to forget everything you know about time. How time passes, flows in a straight line. We live in a line between birth and death. Time is the same for everyone, regardless of where you live. Everyone experiences the same time everywhere. Forget it. Because we need to completely destroy this perception. Because it's wrong. All wrong. Who says this? Wilhelm Leibniz says this first. For Leibniz, there were events that happened before, after, or at the same time. Time was simply the way we organize these relationships in our minds. Then Immanuel Kant joined independently from a more philosophical point of view. Immanuel Kant argued that time is not something that exists spontaneously, or a sequence of relations between things that exist spontaneously. For Kant, time was simply the way our minds organize the experiences we have. Kant suggested that things that exist spontaneously outside of our minds and independently of us do not actually exist in time, but the person who solved the problem and put an end to the discussions would be Albert Einstein. How did he do it? He succeeded with his special theory of relativity, which he published in 1905, and with his general theory of relativity, which he published later. This was the question that bothered Einstein the most, who was also a fan of Newton, because Einstein was sure of one thing after seeing Maxwell's equations. The only constant in the universe was the speed of light. Regardless of where you look or where you stand, the only constant, always moving at the same speed, was the movement of light dot 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 in that case. Something had to change in Newton's laws. Something could not be fixed. Especially time couldn't be fixed. And here's the weird thing. We could live by Newton's laws. We would never even be aware of it, because this is not a situation that we can perceive in our daily life. Newton was able to accurately calculate 99% of the motions of objects in our solar system. And as much as we can perceive in our daily lives, but that 1% that was not a problem for us was a problem for people like Einstein, and everything had to have an explanation. Einstein. How did you come to this conclusion? Einstein actually realized this when he was 16 years old. Thought experiments are famous for Einstein's. He could visualize any situation in his head and would look for answers with that. Here was a train and two people in a thought experiment he set up. At the age of 16, one inside the train and one outside looking at the train. The train is moving at very high speed. Let's assume that there are two trees at the back of this train. 100 meters apart, and lightning struck these two trees at the same time. According to Einstein's thought experiment, this event occurs simultaneously for the person standing outside the train. Lightning strikes both trees at the same time, but from the point of view of the person on the fast-moving train, 
Lightning strikes the first tree first, then the other after a week. Varsalan Metin. Now, let's try to establish how the speed of light is constant with a slightly different example. Speed, as we perceive it in daily life, is also relative and is calculated according to the reference point in the form of addition and subtraction. So consider two cars. Let them both be moving at 60 km per hour, side by side. For people in two cars, the speed of the other car is zero relative to their reference point. So it's not moving. But when the other one accelerates to 80 km per hour, for a vehicle traveling at 60 km per hour, that vehicle is moving at 20 km per hour. This is the basic law. But that doesn't work at the speed of light. For example, the speed of light is exactly 299,792,458 meters per second. But for computational simplicity, we say 300 million. Are the concepts of relativity and relativity starting to make more sense now? Same thing. Two different people, two different times. How is it possible? Meters per second. And let's build a spaceship. And that spaceship can travel at 150 million meters per second and move alongside a particle of light. Under normal conditions, when we measure the speed of this light particle from this space shuttle, the result should be 150 million meters per second, right? Not here. Measure from where you stand or reach half the speed of light or 90 out of 100. Wherever you measure it, the speed of light will be exactly 299,792,458 meters per second. E equals mc2, the most well-known equation in physics. Surely you've heard of it. Here he is energy m mass c2 is the square of the speed of light, and when Einstein first wrote this equation, he wrote it as m equals e c2. Well, energy and mass can be swapped. So energy and mass, actually, same thing. That is, everything you see, everything you know, everything that we can keep concretely, everything that we can observe, it's actually energy. You, you are made of energy, and we are talking about a very serious energy. Let's take a pencil, for example. What we wrote on those papers, if we could convert every single atom that made it into energy, it would release an energy equivalent to an 80 kiloton force TNT explosive. And that means more force than the atomic bomb. Dropped on Hiroshima dot 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 as the speed of an object increases, its energy also increases, and so its mass increases, and as it approaches the speed of light, it needs infinite energy, and therefore mass, to maintain the speed, and this is why it is impossible to exceed the speed of light. Here, the main point that pushes the limits of our perception is this. According to the physics we perceive, it is speed times time equals distance. But when you put the speed of light into this equation, the laws of physics as we know it don't work. Because, as I said, the speed of light is constant. Therefore, there must be differences in time and distance. Let's explain with an example. Let one of the twin brothers, both astronauts, stay on Earth, and the other 99% of the speed of light. Let him go on a journey that will take one year with a space shuttle that can reach 997. Assuming that they are both 30 years old when this journey begins, when the kids meet after a one-year journey, it will be 31 years old as it was in the space shuttle. But the rest, for someone who moves at this speed, time will slow down very, very slowly dot 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 be why the way. This theory was proven in real life in 1971. In what is known as the Haffel Keating experiment, two of the three atomic clocks synchronized with each other board the plane in opposite directions, one to the east and the other to the west. The third is left at the airport. Planes land and three atomic clocks are checked. They are no longer in sync. The clock of the plane flying in the east is 59 billionths of a second compared to the one staying at the airport. Those flying west are 273 billionths of a second behind. Isn't it hard to detect? The human mind cannot accept it. However, even just one example that affects our daily lives may be enough for us to understand the importance of this theory. For example, GPS systems. Since the orbiting satellites move at very high speeds, there is a slight time difference, and this time difference is constantly synchronized. Otherwise, when you look at applications such as Google Map, your 
Position may deviate for kilometers and we would not be able to locate anything exactly. And all this was a very, very short summary of Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity, published in 1905 time. As a result, it is completely an illusion. According to Albert Einstein, everything is variable except the speed of light. What matters is where you look. See you again.